Just as a warning, this experiment involves the use of strong acids and bases. Proper safety equipment is mandatory. This is a continuation of my video outlining the extraction of acetyl salicylic acid from aspirin tablets. In this video, I'll be converting the extracted acetyl salicylic acid into salicylic acid. I'm including the same introduction as the previous video, so if you've already seen it, you can skip ahead. The history of salicylic acid and aspirin is quite interesting, but I'm more interested in acetyl salicylic acid as its use as a precursor molecule. It can be readily extracted from aspirin tablets and converted to salicylic acid. The salicylic acid can then be reacted with methanol to make the nice minty smelling wintergreen, or it can be decarboxylated to make phenol. Phenol is an extremely useful molecule and can be used in a multitude of reactions to produce many useful products. Just as a couple examples, phenol can be nitrated to form picric acid, or it can be reacted with acetone to form bisphenol A. In this video, I will be hydrolyzing acetyl salicylic acid by a base ester hydrolysis. It is also possible to carry out an acid-catalyzed ester hydrolysis. The main benefit of a base ester hydrolysis is that the reaction goes to completion, whereas in an acid-catalyzed ester hydrolysis, the reaction is an equilibrium. However, it appears that in the case of aspirin, the efficiency of both the base and the acid hydrolysis seem to be about the same. It also might be possible to carry out the base hydrolysis without a reflux. However, I did not test this, and it appears that the acid hydrolysis method is the more efficient method. The procedure for the acid hydrolysis is much shorter, and it produces a lot less waste. However, I still decided to produce the base hydrolysis video just for informational purposes. For this experiment, I used 270 milliliters of 14 molar sodium hydroxide. You can also prepare your own using 151 grams of sodium hydroxide and dissolving it in 250 milliliters of water. I also used about 390 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. I also used 152 grams of acetyl salicylic acid that was obtained in the previous extraction video. To the round bottom flask, I added 270 milliliters of 14 molar sodium hydroxide. An excess of sodium hydroxide is used to make sure that the reaction goes to completion. The solution was stirred and eventually all of the acetosalicylic acid powder was dissolved into the sodium hydroxide solution. The solution became a yellow color and heated up a lot and became quite hot. This round bottom flask was now too full to carry out a reflux, so I transferred the solution to a large 3 necked 1 liter round bottom flask. Once the solution started boiling, I refluxed it for about 20 minutes. The reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the acetosalicylic acid is a base ester hydrolysis reaction. The ester in the red box is hydrolyzed by the sodium hydroxide. The products formed in this reaction are disodium salicylate, sodium acetate, and water. The oxygen molecule in the blue box comes from sodium hydroxide. The other oxygen molecules of the sodium hydroxide end up in the water molecules. After the reflux, the solution was allowed to stand and cool down until it was only warm to the touch. This basic solution was then acidified using 390 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid neutralizes the sodium hydroxide and it regenerates the salicylic acid from its salt form, disodium salicylate. Unlike its sodium salt form, salicylic acid is almost insoluble in water, so immediately upon forming it precipitates out a solution. It is not shown here, but the hydrochloric acid also regenerates acetic acid from sodium acetate. Luckily, all the byproducts are quite soluble in water. For safety reasons and to prevent overheating, the hydrochloric acid should be added slowly and not all at once. The pH was checked periodically and the addition of hydrochloric acid was stopped once the pH reached about zero. By the time the pH had reached zero, the solution had become a thick sludge full of salicylic acid precipitate. The salicylic acid precipitate was then vacuum filtered and the precipitate was occasionally packed down to make it more compact. However, even with the packing, I had so much precipitate that I had to empty the Buchner funnel once or twice. Each time the Buchner funnel was full of product, I washed it once using 100 milliliters of cold water. However, I don't think this was nearly enough, and I highly suggest washing with a lot more water, say like 300 milliliters or even more. It is important to wash with a lot of water because you want to remove as much hydrochloric acid, as much salt, and as much acetic acid as possible. Salicylic acid is almost insoluble in water, so the loss should be minimal. 
I did not use enough water to wash, so in the end, there was still a slight hard to detect scent of hydrochloric acid or acetic acid in the product. The three-necked round bottom flask was washed with as little cold water as possible. And then each time the washings were transferred to the Buchner funnel. This is the final product after drying in an oven overnight. The product had a melting point of 157 to 159, which was very close to the theoretical 158.6. However, because I didn't use enough water to wash the product when I was filtering it, there was still a little bit of hydrochloric acid left over that you could smell. I carried out a recrystallization, but I really do not think it was worth the time. Again, just wash your filtered product in the Buchner funnel with a generous amount of water and you should be able to completely skip this. Because salicylic acid is so insoluble in water, it took about 4 liters of boiling water to dissolve it all. The crystallized product was filtered off using vacuum filtration and left to dry in a 120C oven overnight. In the end, after the recrystallization, my yield of the hydrolysis was about 83%. There was a massive, almost 9% loss due to the recrystallization. For this reason, I am emphasizing again to wash your product thoroughly and avoid the recrystallization. In the end, my total overall yield of the extraction and the hydrolysis was about 80%. Without the recrystallization, my yield would have been about 86%. I retook the melting point, but I received the same value of 157 to 159 degrees Celsius.